Did you ever get sick of music, sick of your friends, sick of the music scene? You know, you just want to pack up your life and just go somewhere else? Well, that's exactly where I was when I started Shelter. It wasn't meant to be a band at all, but it was like a final record for me in my music career. I wanted to forget this life, and I wanted to try a new life, living life as a monk. The Shelter Perfection of Desire CD was my goodbye to music forever CD. Or so I thought. I had been into vegetarianism and Eastern philosophy, so after going to India, that was my resolve. I wanted to start a completely fresh new life. I broke up my old band, Youth of Today, and actually wrote what I thought was going to be my final record ever. I wrote it all in my mom's attic, and I only took breaks once a day for food and to watch Star Trek reruns. I gathered some local musicians who were friends, and on the day before the recording, I taught them the songs. The next day we recorded, and voila, it was done and I was done. I packed my bags and moved to a farm in Pennsylvania, shoveling manure, reading the Bhagavad Gita, doing yoga, learning how to cook, learning about myself, leaving my life of stage dives and touring and seeing politics and all that petty bullshit, leaving it all behind. But most of all, I was on a massive detox, a detox for material overload. Little did I know the Bhagavad Gita recommends not quitting your job but performing your work in a spiritual way. And so, for the next bunch of years, I was somehow, check this out, a celibate monk in a hardcore band. Yeah, somehow I pulled that one off. Shelter took off as a band, and we had revolving members who were also monks or well-wishers of us. We were into India, Krishna, chanting, Sanskrit prayers. We traveled constantly. Besides gigs, where we'd have to stay up late, we'd end up going to bed at 8.30, or 9 o'clock, and waking up at 3.30 or 2.30 in the morning for our meditation. It was a very, very mystical time in our lives. And I mean, it was a very peculiar thing. You know, you'd have a show in New Jersey where you'd have, you know, a thousand kids, and 60 of them burning incense and screaming, chanting uh, Vedic prayers from ancient India at the top of their lungs in big kirtans before our sets. Whether you liked it or not, it was very, very interesting to watch. I lived in the Christian temples from D.C. to New York to Pennsylvania to India for the next five years or so. And although I have no regrets, I came to a point in my life where I felt, you know, monk life wasn't for me any longer. So when I was in India once, I met a girl named Sri from Australia, and she became my girlfriend. We moved in together, and now we've been trying to live a spiritual life within the material world, although it's radically different than monk life. Walking this type of middle path, I find now, for me, is my life's greatest challenge. It's definitely not easy. I think I found it easier to be a monk. With Shelter, we did tons of touring over the years, and at least eight times we went to Europe and Eastern Europe. We toured America about a dozen times, Hawaii, Japan, Brazil. Brazil was a weird place because that's a place we, were, we somehow became rock stars in Brazil. We were also getting lots of media coverage around the world, too. Although we were interested in Indian spirituality, we believe that no one country or religion has a monopoly on God or truth. We were taught we should show respect to others, other religions, and respect where they're at and not judge them on the surface. Whenever I heard of Hindus fighting Muslims or Protestants fighting Catholics, to me that was never spirituality or it was just politics. And it's very easy to wear a veil of spirituality but be nothing more than a political institution. To me, spirituality has to be internalized, not just like a show or a costume or a haircut. I think I went through that stage too, and inside it didn't really feel right or natural. It sort of felt forced. If this is the last record, I have nothing but killer memories with Shelter. We owe a lot of thanks to those who took care of us along the way, gave us a place to stay, sang along on stage, sat down and chanted with us, cooked us food, ate our food, fixed our van. Anyway, you know who you are, Harry Ball. <laughs>